What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2022 Hyundai Elantra N-Line. Courtesy of Jack G. and Volvo Hyundai in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so, you guys may know, I recently reviewed the 2022 Hyundai Elantra. I specifically left out the N-Line because this really is its own vehicle in itself because it is substantially more powered. So this is going to be the fun one. And not only that, with this fun to drive vehicle, and of course we will be testing all of that out, but you do get America's best warranty being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 year, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. Not only that, you also get three years of complimentary maintenance as well. So you don't have to pay for things like the oil changes and the tire rotations for the first three years of ownership, which is a beautiful thing as well. But in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering wheel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all of that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so MSRP for the 2022 Elantra N-Line will start at $25,350. Powering this little beast is a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 201 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 195 pound feet of torque coming in at 1500 RPM, power sent to the front wheels through a seven speed dual clutch with paddle shifters, which you guys know, we will of course be testing out in a little bit here, but zero to 60 time is going to come in in approximately 6.5 seconds, with top speed coming in at 125 miles per hour and then pg numbers coming in at 28 in the city 36 on the highway but taking regular unleaded fuel you gotta love that but anyways before we do any kind of paddle shifter or acceleration test in this one i did want to mention the circular drive mode found just to the left of the gauges surrounded in a red perimeter it is literally impossible to miss but anyways when you press that drive mode button you will have to choose between normal sport and smart adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity as well so now that we got all that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straight away here let's put it in that sport driving mode and let's test out the paddle shifters here first and let's just see how quickly they are going to react for us here all right you guys we are going to do a rolling start here it is holding first gear still holding first gear wow nice here we go Not bad. Dual clutch, that's why. Dual clutch, that is going to give you incredibly quick paddle shifter reaction time. So that was very respectable. I just got done actually driving this Sonata N-Line. Those paddle shifters were just as quick. So whenever there's a dual clutch, just so you guys know, for future reference, in case you didn't already know, paddle shifters are gonna be lightning quick. But by the way, there was also a manual shift mode. I put it in there and just slid the shifter to the left. Now I'm going to slide the shifter back to the right. We're gonna get back full control to the end line here and let's find yet another straightaway and let's see how quickly this one here is going to get us up to speed. All right, you guys, bit of a rolling start, but here we go. <laughs> well, a lot quicker than I thought it was gonna be. Not quite as quick as the Sonata N-Line that I just drove, but dang, this thing can move, man. Zero to 60 is 6.5. That's plenty respectable. You're absolutely not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. This is a Honda Civic Si competitor. This thing is dang quick and fun to drive. So, well done, Honda, yet again. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.2-inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it actually comes in at a very respectable 116 feet. And since there's nobody behind us, yeah, that feels perfect, actually. There's, it's definitely not a soft brake. You feel it leans towards the firmer side of things, which you would appreciate in a vehicle like this, any N-Line vehicle, really. So definitely a very nice braking feel to the Elantra N-Line, without a doubt. Then touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as that ride quality goes, it's pretty much as you would expect it to be. Definitely not as soft of a ride quality as the Sonata and line I just got done driving, but it rides like a compact car would, like you would expect it to. You can feel a good bit more of the road, but it's nothing that's going to steer you away from the Elantra N-Line. It is something you definitely get used to. So in my opinion, it's not all that bad. But anyways, then touching on cabin noise, the only thing I'm really getting quite honestly is this exhaust note. So I'm quite excited to be doing the exhaust note later in the video. That ought to sound pretty darn good. But other than that, cabin noise is definitely 
pretty much at bay. You get a slight bit of wind noise at higher speeds, but other than that, it's perfectly fine. As far as steering feel goes, it is a noticeably heavier feel to the steering when you put it in that sport driving mode. But when you take it out, it's kind of loosey-goosey. But I do like the steering feel only in that sport driving mode. And you can have that custom driving mode too if you wanted to get the heavier steering feel, but not that instant acceleration at all times. That's what I actually do on my own Sonata. So that's an option as well. But steering feels definitely perfectly fine. And as far as visibility goes, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Definitely not going to have any issues with the four-door like the Elantra. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Hyundai Elantra N-Line. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2022 Hyundai Elantra N-Line finished in electric shadow. One of the coolest parts about the exterior is this color. It's like a pearl finish, but it's such a cool color. I love that they put this on the Elantra N-Line. But anyways, nothing really new for the exterior on the Elantra N-Line. So I did want to mention that pretty much the same as the 2021 model year, which is when the Elantra was redesigned. So I did want to mention that. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. You will find a N-specific front grille with the N-Line badging found in the upper portion there. Front grille is going to be finished in gloss black, of course, to go along with that gloss black front lip that you guys are currently looking at there. Front air curtains down to the bottom corners there, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. Then to the sides, you will find projector beam halogen headlights coming standard, and they do come with the automatic feature, of course, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard towards the upper portion of those headlights. And of course, with the redesign last year, you do have this new lower hood line, providing better aerodynamics, better fuel efficiency, and a much more aggressive look in my personal personal opinion as well. So very nice looking front end to the Elantra end line without a doubt. But that pretty much rounds out the front though. Let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so now since we are around to the side, gloss black window surrounds do come standard. And I like that because the alternative is for every other Elantra, there are matte black window surrounds. So I can actually show that to you guys real quick. Let's take a look at the front fender. There is N-line badging found on that front fender, as you guys can see there. One of the coolest parts about the side profile, though, is the kind of Z-like shape design found on the side doors there. It's kind of a little accent, but it definitely doesn't allow it to blend in. It's definitely something different than all the other cars on the road, basically. So for that reason, I personally like it. But take a look at the side mirrors. They are gloss black, power adjustable side mirrors. They do come heated then as well. And then taking a look down at the wheel configuration, 18 inch five spoke alloys coming standard. Summer tires, by the way, do come standard on this one, but all seasons are going to be optional if you wanted to go that route. But another thing I really like on the side profile at least is those gloss black side skirts kind of tie in together pretty well with the gloss black front lip I just mentioned to you guys but that pretty much rounds out the side of this one though let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of this one all right I think this is my favorite look on the Elantra end line to be quite honest back here gloss black shark fin antenna does come standard just below that you will also find this gloss black rear spoiler I'm gonna get up a little closer so I can show that to you guys that looks pretty darn good back there as well also LED tail lights coming standard on the Elantra end line love the design to the new Elantra taillights as well but you do have some gloss black perimeter surrounds to those taillights as well of course and just below it all there is going to be an end specific rear bumper and a gloss black rear diffuser with single exhaust outlet with dual chrome tips to the side there so having said that I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So, but now since we are around back of the Elantra end line, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there are several different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the key fob, that is one way. There is also a button on the floor where the driver sits, that is yet another way. And there's actually a hidden way kind of hidden there is a black integrated button onto the trunk itself that is yet another way to go ahead and open it up but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 14.2 cubic feet 
If that was not enough space, there is of course a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down. You just simply pull on a couple levers there in the cargo area and they fold down for you. So it gives you a good bit of extra space then if you needed it. There is a spare tire found underneath the cargo floor in case anybody was curious about that. You do have some cargo lighting then back there as well. But then making our way to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at an even 38 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had sitting behind my own driving position. Did want to also mention there is also a rear center armrest with cup holders found coming standard on the Elantra N-Line. However, there are no charging ports or rear ventilation. You probably don't need it for this size of a vehicle, but always like to mention it. But now making our way to the front seat, six-way power driver seat with power lumbar does come standard. Standard seating configuration is going to be a leather cloth combination. So the leather portion is going to be on the exterior, the cloth portion on the interior portion of the seats. You do also have the end logo towards the upper portion of that seating as well. Front seats are going to be heated, and as far as seat comfort goes, they're not bad. Not as comfy as the Sonata and line I just got done driving, but there are decent bolsters though in this particular seating configuration, so I do appreciate that. But now, let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrap with red contrast stitching, and then you got the end logo found at the bottom portion of that steering wheel then as well. Ten and two grips are perfectly fine. Then taking a look at the startup, let me start actually by showing you guys the key here. You have your Hyundai logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and the circular button that says hold. That is going to be a remote start that comes standard and then push button start then also comes standard. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button found just below the infotainment screen there. But then once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is front and center, and then there is a digital portion to the gauges found on the right-hand side to control what is on that digital portion of the gauges. There are actually steering wheel mounting controls found on the right side of the steering wheel. If you press that, you can check out things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Of course, there's your trip A, trip B. There's actually a digital speedometer available up there if you wanted to display that. There's different safety features, pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges there. Then take a look at overall interior quality. A power sunroof is actually going to come standard on this one. Love that. Black headliner to go along with that. There are alloy foot pedals down below as well. That's pretty cool. Wireless phone charger. Hallelujah. Well done, Hyundai, for that. That could be found just in front of the shifter. That's pretty nice. Dual zone climate control also coming standard here. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls. Not standard, but it is available for an additional $295, so I wanted to mention that. As far as overall interior quality goes, I really like the way they did the air vents on this one. It kind of is like a continuation just above the passenger side glove box, I believe. Audi does something similar now. So I am a fan of that. Also found on the doors, you have a ton of red contrast stitching with like uh, three seams. So that's pretty cool too. Also like this uh, grab handle found just to the right of the shifter. It kind of separates the driver and passenger, makes it a more driver centric vehicle as it is because it's a more enjoyable car to drive. Having said that, wouldn't have minded if they maybe finished that in a uh, softer material, maybe like a leather or a leatherette even would be nice instead of this uh, black plastic but it's still fun. I like it. Just in front of the shifter, you have a 12 volt power outlet to USB charging ports. And again, that wireless fan charger just behind the shifter, you have dual cup holders and a little bit of storage found in the center armrest as well. But overall, fit and finish is maybe a little bit on the inexpensive side, but I certainly don't mind it. Maybe it's because I'm coming off the Sonata end line. I don't know. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. It is an eight inch colored touchscreen display. Bluetooth and audio streaming do come standard, but I tell you one thing the Sonata N-Line didn't have that this does, wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. I love that. That means you don't have to actually connect your phone free via the USB cable. You can just simply put it on that wireless phone charger after you pair it up to the car, of course. And you got wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. It's pretty darn cool. You can, of course, check out your climate control information up there as well. And there is also a voice memo system if you wanted to check that out. And you can check out your radio information as expected. And so when it comes to the sound system of this one, there are six speakers that do come standard. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on that radio, see what we got playing this morning. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, for a six speaker sound system, I don't know why that kind of impressed me. I mean, it's six speakers. It's not going to be the best sound system in the world, but 
For six speakers, that one wasn't that bad. I didn't mind it. Pretty good amount of bass. That, I guess that's what I should say. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the Elantra inline in reverse, you will find a rear view camera taking up the entire screen. Relatively high quality as well. Well done. But anyways, that, as always, is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I want to mention, front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, a.k.a. lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard across the board. Forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, lane following assist, driver attention warning system, high beam assist, and safe exit warning then as well. That's overall when it comes to my final thoughts of this one. I actually, I love the color of this one. Overall, I love the exterior design of the new Elantra without a doubt. And the N-Line takes that a step further over the standard Elantra, gives it a more aggressive appearance, more gloss black accents. It's definitely a very nice design. Nice as us note actually for the Elantra N-Line as well. But having said that, I do remember the Elantra Sport model several years ago when I tested that out. That had a very nice exhaust note as well. So Hyundai always does very well with the exhaust notes of their performance vehicles, I'll say that. And to go along with that, you do again have America's best warranty. So if you drive less than 10,000 miles a year on this one, you have this turbocharged engine warrantied for 10 years. That's pretty cool. And you get three years of free maintenance. The only constructive criticism I can think of for this one is there's a lot of inexpensive, kind of cheapish materials found in the interior. Wouldn't have minded if they even saved some money by maybe just doing a leatherette. You don't have to do the full leather, obviously. So leatherette might be better. Even just around the shifter, if this plastic could be swapped out with maybe like a plastic with a cool design to it, like that's on my 2020 Sonata, that would be cool. But still a very fun car to drive and price very well for what it gives you. I'll say that. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Elantra N-Line in the comments section below. I always like reading your comments. Be sure to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.